This is rental car number 78, and today I'm driving the 2018 Hyundai Elantra SE. Well, at least I think it's the SE, because there's no actual trim level identification on the back of this vehicle, so I'm just taking my best guess. So if this is the SE, and I'm pretty confident that it is, that means that this is the lowest trim level available on the Elantra, and an MSRP is for about $17,950. So even though this is what I would call a budget-friendly sedan, there's still plenty of exciting features to talk about, especially on the interior. But before we get to that, I want to quickly pop the hood and take a look at what's underneath. So the Elantra comes standard with a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. For an extra thousand dollars, you get a six-speed automatic transmission. That's what this one has. It's got front-wheel drive and it kicks out 147 horsepower. It's not bad, but because you give up a little bit of that power, you're getting decent gas mileage. 29 miles per gallon in the city, 38 miles per gallon on the highway, and you get a 14 gallon fuel tank. So I like going through all those specs because it helps me compare these vehicles. I drive about two a week, and after a while they all kind of just blur together. But what does a four-cylinder engine with a six-speed automatic kicking out 147 horsepower really mean in the real world? Well, for me, it means this is a quiet little family sedan. I mean, it's, it's definitely not the fastest. The Camry that I drove last week kicks out over 200 horsepower, and it's much quicker when you accelerate. But this one has the benefit of being very quiet. Uh, on highway speeds, I'm going about 70 miles an hour, I did not have to adjust the volume to bump up the volume of my podcast. You can hear everything crystal clear, and that's really nice. But if you're going to accelerate onto the highway, well, people are probably going to pass you. All right? You're not going to have the fastest little car out there. But if you're in the market for a Hyundai Elantra, my guess is that you're not looking for something super fast. You're looking for something affordable that has great gas mileage, and the Hyundai Elantra has both of those. So don't worry about the specs. The car drives great, right? It's an average sedan, don't worry about it. What you should worry about is comfort and technology. So let's jump inside so I can show you what the Hyundai Elantra has to offer on those two fronts. So let's start with the key. The Hyundai Elantra has an actual key, no key fob here. You do get a remote that's attached with a couple of buttons, lock and unlock on the front along with a trunk release, and then on the back you have a panic button right there in red. And the ignition is on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. Turn that key, start this car up. Let me uh, pause for a second so you can kind of get a feel for how it sounds and looks. So it's a pretty typical startup for a sedan like this. Let's move on and take a look at the steering wheel. So here it is, good size with the Hyundai logo right in the center. You also get a number of buttons. Here on the left hand side you get your volume rocker. The knob next to it controls the uh, track or the channel you're listening to. And then mode switches from radio to Bluetooth, etc, etc. On the right hand side you get your uh, cruise controls. And then that button on the top left hand corner, that adjusts the center display inside the gauge cluster. Here that is, two nice sized gauges and then a small screen right in the center. The screen in the gauge cluster is a decent size. It's easy to see while you're driving. You don't get a lot of bright colors or anything like that, but there are a number of menus that give you all kinds of information about the vehicle while you're driving it and also while it's in park. All in all, I found this setup to be really easy to use. I was very comfortable and it only took me a couple of seconds to figure out what everything did. So that's a big plus for Hyundai. And then shifting your focus to the left of the steering wheel, here's where you get all your standard buttons. Right, you get your window controls, your door locks, that large circular dial, that's for adjusting your mirrors. And then shifting your gaze up just a little bit slightly to the dash, you get a couple of buttons here. The one on the left controls the brightness of the lights inside the vehicle. You also have a control to turn on or off blindside detection. And then the, the control on the far right turns on and off traction control. All of these buttons are easy to reach and easy to see while you're driving the vehicle, so I think that's a big plus. I did mention blindside detection. The Elantra does have it, uh, which is pretty nice for a car in this price point. You'll see there's just a little bit of an icon etched into the mirror. That's the blindside indicator. It blinks yellow when someone is in your blind spot and also flashes if someone is in your blind spot and you turn on to your turn signal. 
And I think it's important to note that you do get this feature also on your passenger side, side view mirror. All right, going back into the vehicle, you get your standard rear view mirror, no special buttons here of any kind. And then up above, you get two nice sized lights to illuminate the cabin and a decent sized sunglass holder. And then looking downward, you get a nice sized display in the center console. And there's a lot of great features to play around with here. First and foremost is a touch screen, but you also get dedicated menu buttons below the screen so you can quickly navigate to wherever you want to go. What's important for me is that I was able to connect my uh, cell phone via Bluetooth within a matter of seconds. I mean, it was super easy, super fast. So that's a big plus. The car also comes preloaded with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, both of which I'm a big fan of. You know, I love it when I can connect my cell phone to the vehicle in lots of different ways and take advantage of all the new sort of tech out there. So if you're not familiar with these new apps, let me quickly summarize it for you. we got Android Auto on Android phones, Apple CarPlay on iPhones. They kind of work the same. You connect the car to your phone via USB cord, and then some of your apps are displayed on the actual center console of the vehicle. So just as a quick example, I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I spend a lot of time in the car. So if I connect my phone to the car in this method, then Audible, the app I use to listen to my audiobooks, is now available on the car's screen itself. It's a lot of fun to play with, and it's nice to see that an $18,000 car has this connectivity built into it. So two big thumbs up to Hyundai. They've done a really nice job with the center display in this vehicle. Shifting your gaze a little bit further down, that's where you're going to find your climate controls and your hazards button. No complaints here from me. I like that there are really nice sized dials to adjust the temperature and the fan, and then big buttons to control everything else that's important. I had no trouble at all getting the car to a very comfortable temperature. And then below the climate controls, you have a nice storage area that has two power ports in the form of cigarette lighters, so you will need an adapter for those. Also an auxiliary port and a USB port right there for you. I like this area because it was able to hold my cell phone pretty easily while I was driving, and it has a collapsible door or lid, I guess you could call it, so you can't hide the whole area if you don't want to look at those power ports. Behind there you get the gear shift, works nice and smooth. I like that the LED lights to tell you which gear you're in do illuminate in different colors. I think little touches like that are a really big plus. And then to the left of the gear shift you get your drive mode button. Typically I don't feel a lot of difference when I play around with the drive modes, but this one was pretty substantial. So you can shift between eco, normal, or sport mode. Uh, the difference between eco and sport is pretty dramatic. You really do get a lot more acceleration when you throw the car in sport. And then to summarize a couple other details, you do get a manual parking brake. There's also two cup holders right here for you. Some decent storage under the center armrest. However, there are no power ports or USB ports down there. And then you also get a fairly large glove box. All right, so that's the front seat. Let's jump in the back seat and take a look at what kinds of things your passengers are going to experience. First and foremost, there's some decent legroom back here. I'm about six feet tall and I fit comfortably. I don't have a ton of legroom, but you know, I have enough to where I uh, don't feel cramped. So there is no center armrest back here. You'll notice this is just a blank panel, so nothing folds out. But you still do get some cup holders. They are on the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers, and they collapse out, I don't know, kind of in an interesting way to reveal uh, two cup holders for your passengers. Another positive is uh, the car seat anchors. They're fairly shallow, so you should be able to connect a car seat fairly easily in this car without struggling too much. And I hate to close things out on a negative, but I don't think I'm a fan of these plastic backings to the front seats. This car is fairly new, and I think you can see it's already been scuffed up quite a bit, so I don't know how well it's going to hold up long term. Thankfully, you only see those plastic pieces if you're in the back seat. Otherwise, it does look fairly nice back here. All right, so that's the back seat. Let's uh, finish things up by looking at the trunk space all the way in the back of the vehicle. All right, so this trunk space on the Elantra is pretty decent. What I don't like is that the wheel wells do tend to infringe on this space quite a bit. So you don't have that large rectangular shape that makes it really easy to cram in a bunch of suitcases when you're heading to the airport. But thankfully, the uh, back seats do fold down. You pull on these little knobs right here on the left and right side of the trunk. 
and then those back seats fold down really easily and you can get a lot more back in the trunk if you need to. So one negative about this car is that there's no trunk release on the actual rear of the vehicle. So typically in most cars I drive, you reach under the logo, right? You touch down there where the rear view camera is, and there's a little button that will open the door for you. Unfortunately, the Elantra does not have that option. So you will have to either go inside the vehicle or use the key fob to open up the trunk. All right, but I hate ending on a negative. Let me just say, so I can be positive at the end of this, that I really did enjoy driving the 2018 Elantra SE. I got to drive this car for about two and a half days. I put almost 200 miles on it. And after all that time, I think I'm going to give this one... Four stars. Look, for $18,000, I think you get a ton of great and exciting features with the Elantra. So I would happily drive it again. I hope you'll give it a chance if you get an opportunity. And if you do, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I would especially love to hear from you if I made a mistake in this video. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you join me next time when I rent my 78th rental car. That'll be the 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. I will see you then.